Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Michael Hartley with Action Coach. What needs to pivot in my business, kickstart your day, get you refocused, because business is changing daily right now. What's up everybody? I'm Dr. Michael Hartley. I am a non-medical type of doctor. I operate on business and today we're going to be talking about what businesses make as their largest mistakes when it comes to marketing. The 10 top things that most businesses have as opportunities in building their marketing that they make mistakes on right now. And then we're going to start looking at what you need to do mindset wise to shift. So first and foremost for this entire session, no I know attitudes. What happens if you have an I know attitude, it's you're telling yourself, yeah, I don't need to pay attention. There's nothing I can potentially learn. There's no room for ego in this, especially right now. So no, I know attitudes. The next thing we got to look at is the only failure is the failure to participate. The only failure in any of this is the failure to be 100% in. We have to be all in all the time when it comes to our marketing efforts. And specifically in today's learning, you have to be sitting there going, yeah, no, I'm not going to check ego at the door and I'm going to participate 100% because I'm going to take notes, I'm going to identify the things that I can implement or need to do better in my business and start moving those things forward. Next thing on your mindset, candidly, is going to be the point of power. Accountability is massive. Ownership is accountability is, is massive. Responsibility, super important. So what are you doing right now to live above the point 100% of the time? How often do you find blame excuses or are you in denial about certain things in the business, in your marketing, with your team, whatever that is? You see, throughout this entire session, we must remain above the point. We must take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for what we are actually doing. So check ego at the door. Only failure is a failure to participate and be 100% in. And we got to stay above the point. We got to take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for everything we're doing. And if something's not working well in your, in your business, you must own it. Uh, one of my mentors taught me a long time ago, he goes, every issue in a business is a management issue or a leadership issue. So if there's a problem in your business, it's either management or leadership, which if you're watching this, you're most likely a business owner, which means it's your responsibility. So then we get into business at the end of the day is math. Your business is math. That's straightforward. So today we're going to talk about the different numbers that you need to know because business is math. If you've never written that down, write it down right now. If you don't understand the numbers in your business, it's critical. So when we look at numbers, what's the first numbers we need to know when it comes to marketing? Leads. Leads are the first one that we have to look at and qualified leads. So pipeline, total number of people who are coming into our business, who are engaging with us in every single industry classifies a lead as something slightly different. So for you, what is a qualified lead? In fact, if you're watching this, pause this right now and outline all the different things that cause somebody to be a qualified lead for your business. How do you classify it? Write it down right now. So how many different strategies do we have to bring in leads? You should have at least 10 that are consistently bringing in leads all the time. I hear all the time, you know, in networking events, I get, you know what, this is the best networking event in the world or networking group in the world. I get 80% of my business, 70% of my business from this group. That is a problem because if that group dries up, you just lost 70, 80, 90% of your leads. You want 10 different strategies bringing in leads to your business and each of those 10 should bring in 10%. So if one stops working, your business can still make, move forward. So that's the first one. Second one is going to be your conversion rate. You got to know of the leads that come in, how many are turning into customers? How many of the leads are converting into clients? What does that actually look like for you and for your business? How do you track, test, and measure your conversion rate? One of the biggest opportunities we see is that most businesses don't properly track their leads. Where did they come from? What's our cost per acquisition? What's our cost per lead and things like that? You see, we don't know those numbers if we don't actually track our leads properly. And then if we don't track our conversion rate properly, we must know these numbers in our business. The third number we need to know in our business is the number of transactions per customer. How many transactions per year per customer does our business have? For some, like retail, that's going to be a lot. For other industries, architecture, real estate, funeral homes, uh, you, you can list off a whole bunch. It's going to be more like one or two. How many numbers, how often do you have repeat business? The next one, after we look at how often people are spending money with us 
we want to look at how much they're spending with us. What's your average dollar per sale? Per sale, per transaction, what's the average? You know, I get told, oh, it's so hard for me to understand. You know, I got, you know, $10 products and I got $10,000 products or services. That's why we average it. Average is an average. It doesn't matter what your spectrum is. An average is an average. Well, you know, but if we add in these one-time costs, it's going to skew it. No, it's not. It's going to show you what your average is. So we got to know what these average numbers are. So how much repeat business we have and how much there's each, each individual customer, client, patient, guest, member, subscriber is paying each time. Business at the end of the day is math. So once we know that, now we got to look at profit. So based off of what we're selling, what's our profit margin? What's our profit margin look like? Both gross and net. We don't want to just look at top line revenue. We want to look at bottom line profit. What are we actually making in our business? And what are the things that we need to do to increase that percentage? Increase price, decrease cost, increase time efficiency, especially for service-based businesses. Time efficiency is a major waste on profit margin. So now that we know these, I'm going to walk you through a quick example of why that they are important. So if a business has 270 leads, for the year, 270 leads for the year at a 40% conversion rate. At the end of the year, they'll have 288 customers. So 200, 720 leads for the year, 40% conversion rate, 288 paying customers, clients every single year. If every one of those 288 only make one transaction a year at $350, we have a hundred thousand dollar business, 288 paying customers clients, guests, one time a year, spending $350 gives us a $100,000 business. And if our profit margin is 10%, we have $10,000 in cash in profit at the end of the year, unless we've decided to do something else with that profit and then it's not cash. So profit though would be 10,000. So then we look and we look at each of these five areas. We call it the five ways of business, leads, conversion, number of transactions, average dollar per sale, and margin. Reason being is these red ones, customers, revenue, and profit are all the results. They're all the output. And to affect outputs, we must directly affect the critical drivers for them. So we have to look at that. So we're going to put in a handful of strategies to gain more qualified leads. We're going to put a handful of strategies in to increase your conversion rate. Handful of strategies for increasing how often people come back and how much they spend. And then we're going to look at a couple of those strategies I just talked about here to increase your overall net profit margin. So for an entire year, for the next 12 months, we're going to focus on these things. Do you think that we could see an increase? Absolutely. So if we increased our number of leads from 720 a year to 1200 a year, very doable. 1200 a year is a hundred leads a month. Most businesses can generate a hundred leads a month. So in this specific example, that's what we did. Increased conversion rate from 40% to 60%. So again, going from maybe two strategies to 10, increased leads there going you know adding things like what makes us unique asking more questions understanding actually how to do sales and focus it on them versus on you things like that increase conversion rate that lead so those two increases would take our customers from 280 to 720. our number of customers equals the amount of leads we actually had the previous year then we look at number of transactions and if our number of transactions is just one right now, well, a few things, our focus would be to get every client to spend money twice, just one more transaction per year. That gets us to two. And we look at a few different strategies to increase average dollar per sale, bundling things together, packaging, increasing prices, our three or four, just to name a few. Bunch of strategies there. You look at McDonald's became infamous for their average dollar per sale strategy by asking one simple question at the end of every order. Would you like fries with that. One simple question. You go to a grocery store. Do you, know, do you need ice today? Do you need a bag today? What's your, it's the Amazon you may also like button. What's your, would you like fries with that? What's your Amazon you may also like button? Average dollar per sale. Increase that incrementally going from 350 to 500. So we've increased leads with putting in a bunch of strategies. We've increased conversion rate by being more specific with it and adding more value and understanding what makes us unique. Maybe there's a guarantee in place, understanding the questions we need in the actual sales process that we can test and measure. We've now increased our customers 
getting them to come back one extra time and increasing their average sale by $150 goes from a $100,000 business to a $700,000 business, just like that. You see, business is math, and when you know the numbers, you know the rules of the game. And when you know the rules of the game, you can score and you can become successful. So you have to know the numbers in your game. You have to know that business is math, and you need to know what your numbers are. Because if you don't know what the baseline is, it's really hard to improve them. So, and then we look at margin, 10% increase in margin, handful of strategies I already walked you through there to increase this. So you go from making 100,000 to making 700,000. You go from profiting 10,000 to profiting 144. And think about this for a second. If you only, if you decrease the percentages of what these increased by, if you, if maybe we only have a 10% increase, what would that look like? 10% increase, increase of the, by the way, if you only increased each one of these five by 10%, you would end up with six, over 60% more profit. Kind of crazy. Just by increasing each by 10%. So this is the importance of knowing some of these fundamental numbers in your business when it comes to growing it, when it comes to your marketing efforts and stuff like that. So now that once, once we know what our numbers are, we can start to do something with them. So you gotta know your cost per lead and your cost per acquisition. You have to know for every lead that we get, what did it cost us? For every new customer client that we gained, what did it cost our business? We must know these numbers. You know, if you put $1,000 out in marketing and you gain 100 leads, going back to getting 100 leads per, per month, so you put $1,000 out, my cost per lead right here is $10. $1,000 divided by 100 customers, cost per lead, or sorry, 100 leads, gives us $10 as our cost per lead. If that same $1,000 that turned into 100 leads gave us 10 paying customers, $1,000, 10 customers, our cost per acquisition is $100. I test measure that for the next three months. If that maintains consistency, I now know for every $100 I put out, I'm gonna get a new customer. Those are the kind of numbers that you need to know in your business because that's how you then go create a marketing plan and a marketing budget and things like that. So let's start getting into the top things that you know businesses struggle with when it comes to marketing. First and foremost is numbers. Let's be honest about that. You gotta know your numbers. So number one mistake businesses make, no people, meaning it's all on one person, the owner oftentimes to do the marketing. Chances are you're not gonna be the best person at it anyways. So don't try to be. Number one issue businesses have is no people doing the marketing for them. Second issue that we see in businesses, most popular, is no marketing plan. A 10 by 10 system is a very quick marketing plan as an example that we kind of walked through a minute ago. So you must have a marketing plan and you gotta have people who can help support and actually do it for you. And if you don't have the cash, go get lines of credit, go get a business loan, get people to do it on commission and give them a large commission so it's worth their time. Whatever you need to do, make sure you have other people doing it so you don't have to do all of it and make sure you have an actual plan. If we're just trying stuff out, we're wasting time, energy, and a, probably a whole bunch of money. So number one problem, no people. You must have people helping you in your business, market your business. Number two is a plan. And candidly, there's gonna be a handful of people out there. Think of it like a bird eye, where you know a bird kind of sits up top and they're kind of looking at all of it, maybe their prey and things like that. Well, there's a handful of people out there who are already doing business development for businesses. And the people they're engaging with are your customers. Well, you may not need to pay them a W-2 salary, but you can give them a good commission. They're already out there getting paid to do the work. Leverage it. And as long as there's not you know, conflicting stuff going on, competition and whatnot, they can send you business. So look at what that actually needs to be. Get people to help you. Don't do it yourself. Have an actual plan. Third thing, no budget. We talked a minute ago about how to create a budget. You need to know your cost per lead, cost per acquisition to start with. Once I know those numbers and I know what, how much business we want to add, now I can put these numbers together and actually create a, a proper marketing budget. You must have your numbers known so you can create that. Then we look at number four. Number four, wrong targets or targets. Multiple targets. Most businesses shouldn't just have one target market. You should have a, a specific target market per marketing strategy or a campaign. 
Most businesses have multiple target markets. So you gotta have the right ones. Who are the people who actually need you or want to buy from you or need your product or service? Think about the people who come in the most often. Who are they? Be very clear on how much you're investing, not spending, investing. There must be a return on this and who you're targeting. For most businesses, marketing is an expense because they're not getting a return on that investment. You must be getting three, four, five dollars back into the business for every dollar that goes out. Most businesses cannot afford advertising. Most businesses need marketing. Advertising is about brand awareness. By the way, until you are doing millions of dollars in sales, nobody cares what your brand name is. What they care about is what you're going to do for them. The only people who care about your business name are you and your mom. Your customers don't. Your customers care what they're going to get in value. So focus on that instead of focusing on your name. Target markets. Number five, wrong offers or no offers at all. You have to have offers. What are you, we're not talking about discounting. Never discount in your business. It's always about value-added. What are we adding in value to our customer base, to our client base, to our prospects, our pipeline? Identify every single offer for every single target. Whiff them base, what's in it for me? We are very selfish human beings. We are sitting here thinking, what's gonna be in it for me? So your offers should directly correlate to your targets because it's gonna be different for each one. So we've got to have specific targets, the right ones, and we have to have the right offers for the right targets. It can't just be one offer for everybody. That's number five. Number six is going to be the wrong words. The wrong headlines. On average, you get about 10 words to get someone's attention. 10 words to help them emotionally connect with you to look at the rest of the advertisement, the marketing, the campaign, the offer, whatever that is. So you have to use the right words, the right headlines, with them base, what's in it for me. 10 words or less, are you gonna get my attention or not? I don't care what your name is. I don't even care what you're selling me. I wanna know what's in it for me. You get 10 words to tell me. Three things you need to know about how to blank. Great. I wanna know what those 10 things are, those three things are, those four things are. You know what, I need to know that step process. Two things you need to know about. Quick examples, people like quantifiable stuff. So use the right words and test and measure it out. Don't do anything just by trial and error and like, oh, you know, throw the spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. That's not a good plan. Number seven, not consistent. Consistency routine in what we are doing is the only way to proper test and measure. You do some, you know, the flavor of the month. There's a reason why that is a quote in business. Well, it's just what we did today. We have to be consistent with what we're doing because if we're not consistent, we are not going to be able to know properly what is actually working for our business. So we have to be able to test and measure this stuff. And the only way to do that is through consistency. So what does that look like? How do you build consistency with your marketing in your current business? This is also why it's important to not just be all up to you. There has to be a team of people who are helping support because you're not going to have all the time in the world to do it. There will always be more things to do than time to do them. So finding the things that are most important and being consistent with them. Number eight is going to be no referrals. If you are not getting referrals in your business, either A, the quality of delivery is horrible or you're just not asking for it. If people, if you have a lot of repeat business, you should be getting referrals left and right. And if you're not asking for them, start today. How do you become consistent with asking for referrals? How does that start to kind of come together? What's a referral system look like? Every single one of these 10 things that I'm walking you through should have a systems-based approach. It should not just be, well, we're just gonna try something out. What's a system that we can do consistently so now that we can test and measure it? And if we're not receiving referrals, we need to. There are four different ways for people to send you referrals. Here's their contact information, lowest grade. Email introduction, second lowest. Third one is gonna be a phone call, three-way phone call with all of us that I can make a you know, verbal introduction. And then the fourth one will be either video conference or in person, whether that's through coffee or dinner, lunch, whatever that might be. So identify not only that you want to get referrals, identify how you want to receive those referrals. So that gets us to number nine out of 10. Number nine, no strategic partnerships. Not having strategic partnerships in the business 
is a major problem we see. Strategic partners are those that have your entire customer base that are not your competition. You have to understand that we need at least six, minimum six strategic partners, up to 20. First, identify industry. What are all the industries that have my customer base that don't do what I do? Number two is then, who in those industries can I actually reach out to? Or do I know people who could send me referrals to them? What does that look like? And now I need to have a systems-based approach to build relationships, to build rapport. We are here to send business back and forth because we both have the same kind of customer base. So we can send business back and forth. We can say, you know what? Maybe we need to have a system where it's like, okay, we need to send at least you know one per month to each other. What does that actually look like? Strategic partnerships. By the way, both of these cost you zero to no dollars at all, right? Low cost, if not no cost strategies. So we have to understand that it's not all about all these, you know, we gotta do all the digital stuff. You should be online. You should have SEO put on your website and you should be using hashtags in your social media to get you know people to look at you. You should be doing things on, on different platforms. It's not just about that though. There are a handful of low cost and no cost strategies, these are two of them, that your business can implement that will give you a massive return because these are warm audiences. You look at all the other stuff, you know, cold calling, online, pay per click, you name it, that's a, that's a cold audience. These provide warm audiences. So that gets us to number 10. No referrals, no strategic partnerships, no follow up. Going back to becoming consistent and staying consistent. If you're not following up with 100% of those that said no to you, you are wasting opportunity. You see, when we have follow-up in place, that's where most money comes from in businesses, candidly. Because it, the, the, squeaky wheel gets, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You've probably heard that before. There's a reason why. You stay consistently following up with somebody, they will eventually turn into a yes. Unless you've deselected them. If you've said, you know what, they actually wouldn't be a good customer or client for us, we don't want them, then stop following up with them. Every person who says no, it's just no for now. It's not no forever, it's no for now. So we must follow up. We must have a follow-up system. Simple system. We teach every one of our clients. There are 26 letters in the alphabet. There are 13 weeks every quarter. 13 times two is 26. Math kind of works itself out. So I'm gonna take two letters of the alphabet every single week and I'm gonna follow up with those individuals. Whether that's by last name, company name, I don't care. You choose. All the A's and B's week one, C's and D's week two, E's and F's week three. So by the time we get to week 13 of every quarter, we're at the Z. Then we get back into week one of the next quarter, back up to the follow-up system, letter A and B, here we go. That way we are following up with every single client and past client and spurt and prospect that said no once at a minimum every 90 days. For some industries, you need to be way more often than every 90 days. And for some, that minimum number is okay. You need to know what that is for your business, how often, because guess what? If you're not following up, guess who is? Competition. So, do you want the business or, or you want, or you, would you prefer just to give it to them? Because if you're not following up, you are giving them your business. Because most likely they will say yes at some point. The question is, is, do you want it bad enough or no? So these are the 10. A couple honorable mention ones, not having a database, not asking for reviews, having bad photo quality on your websites and stuff like that, no video, and lack of content. Video is more important almost now than ever when it comes to your marketing. You gotta have video. And candidly, it doesn't have to be high quality video. If it's gonna go on TV, that's a little bit different. If it's going anywhere else, it doesn't matter the quality. You just need to have it, create it. Do Zoom and record a you know, conversation with a customer getting their review as a testimonial. So it's not, just, it's not just words, it's through video. There's audio, visual, people connect with it more. And if you don't have content, you gotta add value through content. What is that content that you're going to be adding? So these are some of the honorable mention stuff. Set daily business standards. I don't use the word goal here. Use daily business standards. What does that look like for your business? So I'm gonna get out of the way here for a second. What does that look like when it comes to any of these 10 or the honorable mention stuff? Daily standards. 
How are we doing these systems? How are we implementing these systems and stuff like that? What is it that we need to be doing on a daily basis? It's not about looking at weekly. It's not about looking at monthly. It's definitely not looking at quarterly or just yearly. Business and life is changing at such a rapid pace. We must look at this stuff daily. And for some businesses, it's hourly. If you're doing a high number of volume of transactions every day, it's hourly. If you're not, then it's going to be, it's going to be daily. You got to look at your numbers because at the end of the day, business is... We have to know the math. We have to know the numbers behind all of it. So wherever you're watching this right now, I want you to hit pause and tally up your top five. What are your top five learnings from this section? We've talked through knowing your numbers, what numbers you need to know, top 10 things that businesses fail at, and a handful of additional honorable mention ones. Pause this video right now. Top five. Write them out. And if you're not doing that, then why are you watching this at all? If you're not willing to be 100%, and we talked about this at the top, if you're not willing to participate 100%, then you're wasting your time watching any of this. If you have an I, I, I got it, I got it. No, you don't. No one does. No one has all of it. Self-included. Myself included. I have coaches that, that help remind me of this on a consistent basis. Top five. So... In a world right now that we can't be in person with anything, I want you to think about how to do all of this on a digital basis. And once we can finally leave our homes and stuff like this, and so if you're watching this like three months from now and you're like, I have no idea what he's talking about, this is getting recorded in the midst of shelter in place and stuff like that. So right now, if you're unable to be in person with people, how do you do this on a virtual level? More video and things like that are gonna be super important. So when we look at your top five, what are those things that you need to have in place? Take action today. Put it on your calendar right now. So whatever your top five are, next to the top five, I want you to put how much time each one needs to be dedicated towards it, to take the first step. Right now, how much time? And then the third step is I want you to open up your calendar, whether it's on your phone, on your computer, wherever you have your calendar, and I want you to set a time aside with yourself, an appointment with yourself for that much time that you just outlined to work on this stuff. I'm Dr. Michael Hartley. I'm here to elevate your business, enhance your lifestyle, and take action. Without action, there are no results. Bye for now.